Hey everybody, in this video, I'm going to show you a great drill that you can use to help develop your outfielders and infielders to help get those pesky fly balls that fall in between them. Equipment needed, and this is just strictly optional, is a softball fungal racket. So here's how you do the outfield infield communication drill. So you're going to set up your infield and outfield. Field, center field, right field. And as a coach, you're going to set up, it's a little bit easier, uh, around uh, the, um, the pitcher circle, okay? So by the rubber. Okay, so all you're going to be doing in this drill really is hitting... So that's why I recommended this is strictly optional, okay? So if you don't want to use this, which is fine, but you could throw the ball, okay? So throwing the ball, actually, you could place it. You want to place it in certain spots, okay? You're going to place it right in behind, like, in certain gaps, okay? You want to place it in these places where it's going to be hard for them to actually get those balls, okay? With a bat, it's a little bit harder to actually place it. I've never seen one consistently place the ball in some of these spots every single time. Um, so throwing it will make it accurate. Uh, but if you want to hit it and simulate it, you can use one of those softball fungal rackets. And I'll put a link uh, in the actual uh, description uh, if you want to purchase one of those. But, um, yeah, it's it's much easier to use one of these. I use it. Um, and then I got to a point where, you know, sometimes I just throw the ball depending on, you know, uh, how I'm feeling that day. But for the most part, you want to be able to place exactly the balls in these spots. So this is how the drill actually works. So let's clean this up. And so, for example, if I'm going to hit that ball, I'm going to hit it right in here. Okay, so it's going to go high into the air. Um, and the benefit of the racket is you can actually place it really high up in the air and get that loft. And so this... Right fielder is going to come in. This is, you know, there's going to be more space and this is going to come in and go for that ball. And second base is going to track back to get that ball. So when you're actually doing this, the communication drill, the part is you always want the actual both players to call for it 100%, right? You can mine, 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 you know, yours, yours, yours. So what I like to do is so if they're saying mine, 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 and if the person who knows that they can't get that ball they're actually going to be calling that player's name. So they're going to yell that player's name because they know that they can't get it and that person has a better chance than them to actually track that ball down and catch it. So again, you got to get used to for them saying, you know, either mine, 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 or, and then the other person's going to yell the other person's name to make sure that, you know, that they know they have it, right? They're not going to say their name. And so the whole team gets used to saying, when they say the other person's name, that person's the one who's going to make the attempt to get that ball, okay? But what happens if, you know, they're both saying mine and they both think that they can actually get this ball? So this is where, you know, you have to sort of, both of them are going to be calling the ball at the same time. And when that happens, right, you want to make sure that, you know, both sing. So say, for example, we are hitting the ball here, okay? Change this. So it's going into center field, okay? Um, you know, center fielder is catching a ball, but the shortstop thinks that they can make that ball, and then second thinks they can get it too. So they're both saying, mine, 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 okay? And so no one's backing off the ball. Um, and so this is where the center fielder has to sort of take charge and say, I got this ball, you know, you know, this is mine, I got to get this, right? And call the other ones off end. So... This is where your infielders have to know is that the outfield always, always has the right of way. And why is because they're running in versus infielders who are backtracking and chasing and going the opposite way of where, where their body is facing. Okay, so an infielder, so if you want to do it this way too, right, you're going to hit it out here. Um, you know, they both, all of them like shortstop things can get in there closer Right, and then same thing. So they got to know when they're both calling it that that actual left fielder 
has the right of way to get that ball because they're running in and it's an easier run for them. Okay. And there's times where the shortstop's already there and definitely they can be able to make that catch. Right. But I'm um, not sure if anyone saw the 2022 uh, wild card game between the Toronto Blue Jays and uh, Seattle Mariners. And it was the game two. And I believe Toronto was up eight to one. Um, and Seattle came back and they tied it because there was a ball again that was hit exactly in the same situation. The ball was hit and it went up the middle. George Springer was the center fielder. Bobichet was the shortstop and they both went for the ball. Um, full charge, you know, it was playoff atmosphere. They know they can get it. Uh, and they both collided with each other. I believe George Springer separated his shoulder. Uh, Bobichet, had, you know, that was fine, stayed in the game, but, uh, you know, that just, that deflated the team, right? And your best player just got injured. Um, but, yeah, you got, you got to, like, Bo Bichette has to get out of that way, um, you know, and give the right of away to George Springer, and he should have had that ball, right? There's no way Bo should have had that ball because he was backtracking. And, and again, this is going to happen, but that changes the dynamics of the game. So every single time this happens, so if we're going to do the example over here, right, so... It's easier for the right fielder to come and get this ball. And again, every situation is different, right? Maybe they're playing a bit of a shift and the right fielder is playing close to more center field, right? So maybe first base has a better track or second base running on that angle can actually get that ball. So every, wasn't, every situation is different, but you the repetitions of doing this drill over and over where you are making sure that the outfielders are calling it, like everyone's calling it, and then every point in time, if the infielder thinks they can get it then and they're closer to it, then the outfielder is going to call that person's name on second base or shortstop or third or first and let them know they got it, right? So that's the communication part of this drill, right? Getting them used to saying the person's name that they, they say, I can't get this ball, so you're, they're calling the other name. Or I'm saying, by mine, mine, get away. If they're both saying, by mine, mine, the outfielders, they got to get out of the way and then give them the right of way to track that ball, okay? So, again, this is a simple drill, um, but it's really the communication part of saying mine or the other person's name that can't get to it, and then understanding that it's the actual outfielder that has the right of way to be able to uh, attempt to get those balls that fall in between infield and the outfield, okay? Uh, enjoy this drill. Uh, let me know if you have other suggestions or uh, ideas to improve this drill. Uh, put it in the comments and let me know what you think. Okay. Thanks for watching Easy Softball Drills for your practice plan. Make sure to check out our other videos and subscribe to our channel.